Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Vicky Logan, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about credit, money, how to get your money right. I am not an expert by any means, but I just wanted to share my experiences with you guys, how I built my credit um, and improved it over time. So yeah, let's get started. First of all, this video is in partnership with Credit Sesame. We're gonna be talking about how to build your credit with Credit Sesame and also how to check and monitor your credit as well. That's the app that I'm currently using and I wanted to share it with you guys because I think it's awesome. So first off, before we get into that, I wanted to talk to you guys about what credit actually is. Credit is basically a honor system. It's like a system that allows you to prove that you are responsible with money so that you can get more money. Basically see if you are responsible enough to be loaned money in the future. That is why you would need credit if you wanted to get a loan, if you wanted to uh, buy a house or buy a car. Um, obviously you can buy those things cash, but most of the time, most people are going to take out a loan for those things. If you are not one of those kind of people and you like to spend cash on everything, this video is not for you. But if you do need credit, which most adults do these days because large purchases are hard to make if you are not a millionaire. Most people that I know get credit from getting student loans. Um, I didn't have student loans, so I had to build my credit on my own. There are multiple ways to build credit. One of the ways is to get a secured credit card through a credit card company where basically you put a deposit down and then they give you a credit card with a very, very small limit and then you can start to build your credit that way. Another way to build credit is to someone who already has established credit to put you on one of their credit cards as an authorized user and then their credit history shows up on your credit history and then now you have credit or you can use everyday purchases to prove that you are credit worthy the latter is probably the easiest way doesn't require credit doesn't require credit checks and you don't have to put down any money or anything it doesn't require you to pay anything at all um it's probably the least invasive way and the best way to do this would be through credit sesame credit sesame offers a way to build your credit through their sesame cash credit builder which is basically a debit card that you can get from credit sesame and you can use those debit transactions to prove that you pay for things on time so the money you already have and the daily debit purchases you make can now build your credit history and credit sesame will automatically report your purchases to the credit bureaus to help build your credit history and your score each month so that way you're only spending money that you actually have which is a good way to get into the habit of having good credit because when you do get credit cards you're loaned money and that's where people get into trouble when you're loaned money and you don't have money to pay it back you're more likely to build up debt it sets you back and it lowers your score sesame cash gives you the option to build your credit without having debt. So if you're scared of having debt or if you've never had a credit card before, Sesame Cash is a great way to start. So you're able to check your credit score every day on the Credit Sesame app, which is amazing. And then as it continues to grow, you get rewards. For every 10 point increase that you get in the first 30 days of having your Credit Sesame, Sesame Cash account, you get $10. So you do get rewarded for having good credit, which is great because a lot of people get credit cards for the perks, for the benefits. Um, which I love credit cards for that. However, you can use this debit card in the same way that you would a credit card by getting cash back on purchases that you make through participating brands. So I definitely think that Sesame Cash would be something that you should look into if you don't have any credit and you need to build your credit or you wanna build your credit up. It's a great way to do that by just making everyday purchases. So I highly recommend you guys check out the link in the description box and sign up for Sesame Cash. I'll have a link below where you guys can find that and read all the information on it. I think it's a really great way to build your credit if you haven't already done so. Another reason why I love Credit Sesame is because you can check your credit score. If you already have credit and you need to know what your credit score is, there are credit monitoring services that you can sign up for, but some of them cost money. Um, like if you go to the credit directly to the credit bureaus, uh, like TransUnion, you would pay uh, like $25 a month to uh, check your score through all three credit bureaus. There are different credit bureaus that report your score and some of them differ. So you'll have like a score that'll be different from another score and you won't know which one is the right one. Usually the most accurate is TransUnion. TransUnion does charge for you to check your credit score daily. 
the cool thing about Credit Sesame is they use TransUnion to uh, calculate your score. It'll basically give you a breakdown of what's going into your credit, what's causing your credit to go up or down, and um, help you to improve over time by monitoring the changes in your credit. So there's also a premium option where you can pay $15 a month and it'll give you even more in-depth information, which is helpful if you are planning to buy a house or get a car or something and you wanna like monitor it really heavily. So you have all your ducks in a row for when you are going to run your credit to get a loan. Your credit is made up of all of your credit accounts. So if you have loans already, if you have student loans, those go into your account. If you have credit cards, those go into your account as well. Different factors go into your credit, right? So there's your payment history, which should always, please guys, please, if anything, if anything, always pay on time. Everything that is in your credit, you have to pay on time. You have to pay. It is imperative that you pay on time. If you get a negative mark that says that you did not pay something on time, it is going to drop your score by like 20 points. The highest your score can be, I believe, is an 850. The 700 range is like the sweet spot, and then like the 800 and up is like perfect. So you definitely want to get to that 800 range. Um, but if you're in your 700 range, you're still good. 600 is a little shaky. It's a little shaky. It means you need work, needs improvement. Anything under 600, you're, you're, you're tanking. You need, to, you need to get on it. Yeah, if you are like in the 700s and you pay something late, it's gonna drop you to like the 600s. So you gotta make sure that you pay things on time for sure. That's like the most important thing that goes into your credit history is on time payments. And it takes seven years for your late payments to come off of your credit. So you wanna make sure that you pay things on time. You can write goodwill letters. You can reach out to lenders or um, reach out to the credit bureaus to see if they can take off any older marks or anything, or see if there's any mistakes that may have been made if you did pay something on time and it wasn't reported as on time. And sometimes they'll take them off, sometimes they won't. You just gotta get a hold of the right person. So sometimes it takes some persistence um, and just keep asking, especially if they're older and just are about to fall off anyway, they may just go ahead and knock it off for you. But um, yes, most times you gotta wait. You just gotta wait, it's a waiting game. If you do something wrong, it's gonna take a long time for it to come off. So that's one of the main factors you wanna make sure that you pay things on time. Um, another factor that goes into your credit is the amount of credit lines you have open. They like to see that you have a range of things on your credit. So if you only have one credit card, that's really not gonna show that you're credit worthy because you only have one card. So you can't prove that you're responsible if you only have one thing that you're responsible for. They like to see you have a lot of open accounts and all of them are in good standing. If you have a loan, you have a student loan, you have like a car loan, a mortgage, and a credit card, like three or four of those. Um, they like to see that you can manage all those things because that shows that you're mature mature i guess a mature adult and that you're adulting properly one thing that they like to see when you go in to get a new loan is like they like to see that you've had a lot of experience and that you are taking care of things responsibly in that experience over time so the age of your credit history also goes into that as well that one isn't as big of a deal but it does affect your score you can't like get around it unless you know someone older who has very old credit and they can put you on one of their oldest cards that might bump up your score a little bit so if you can ask somebody to put you as an authorized user on their like a really old credit card that's like 20 years old that can bump up your credit only if they take care of their credit properly only if because if you get put on somebody's card then they have negative remarks, late payments, delinquent account. They may pay their credit card on time, but if their credit limit is like $5,000, for example, and they use 4,000 of it every month, that's gonna knock your credit score down a lot. Because it's the oldest, it's gonna be a heavier weighted account, and using that much of your credit is a no-go. The credit utilization is a big part of your, of your credit too. One thing that you wanna do is make sure that your credit utilization, utili I cannot say that word fast, credit utilization is low. It's not bad to hold a balance, but you don't have to hold a balance. So people will say that you have to hold a balance in order to show credit. You don't have to hold a balance. You just need to use your card. You can pay off your cards, it's fine. Um, the most important factor is that you're using them, but paying them off is not a bad thing, so you don't need to hold a balance. But if you do hold a balance, make sure that your balance is below 10% of the actual limit of your card. So if your credit limit, if you get a credit card and your credit limit is $2,000, 
you only use $200 of your $2,000 limit. That shows you're responsible because you're not using too much of your card. If you use 50% of your card a month, every month, and they, that gets reported, that's gonna show as you having a high utilization rate. They say the safe spot is like 30%, but I would say keep it below 10. Because if you keep it below 10, you don't have to worry about going over. You never want to max out a card. You never, never want to max out a card. If you're given an $8,000 limit, only use 800 of it at a time. And if you do spend more on that card, just pay it down before it gets reported. Now, this is very important, and a lot of people don't get this. Paying your card on time is not the only factor. The balance on your card, the amount that you spent, you have to make sure that that amount is lower than the 10% or 20% um, of your actual limit before it gets reported to the credit bureaus. And let me tell you why, because the actual due date that you have to pay your card by, it's not the date that your balance gets reported to credit bureaus. They've already seen what's in your account, what you've spent. They've already seen what you've spent before the due date. So you have to pay down your card before the due date. You have to pay it on the date that it gets reported. And you can see what day, your credit balance gets reported on your credit report, which would be in Credit Sesame um, or wherever you check your credit. That's the most important date. You wanna keep that date in mind because that's the date that you wanna make sure you pay down your balance by or pay off your card by. So if you spend money on your card and you wanna just pay it off before it gets reported, that would be great, or pay it down to below 20 or 10% so that your utilization rate is very, very low. Because what happens is all of your credit card and all of your accounts all of the balances get added up and reported to the credit bureaus. And that balance that you hold is your debt. And once those credit bureaus see the debt that you have and compare it to how much credit you're given, how much credit you've been given, they're gonna see how much debt you're in and that will determine your, your score as well. Paying on the due date does not matter. Paying before the due date is very, very important, okay? So make sure you're paying before it gets reported, not on the due date okay i don't even know what my due dates are actually i pay the cards down like as soon as i get paid or whenever i know um like i've made a large purchase or something and i want to pay that down so it doesn't show up on my balance um i'll just pay it as quickly as possible so usually when i buy something i will pay down my card but i never pay on my due dates um because that's just too much pressure I like to pay stuff as soon as I see that it's a high balance, I'm paying it. And I'm making sure that all of my credit cards balances are below 10% because I don't want it to show up on my credit that I'm using too much credit. So that's very important as well. Other factors that go into your credit is delinquent accounts. Usually if you're paying things on time, nothing will be delinquent, but make sure you're paying things on time. Pay them, even if you just pay the minimum amount every single time, pay the minimum amount every single time. Just keep paying it. Um, what you don't want to do is though, I've heard, this is what I've heard, I don't have any uh, student loan debt, but I've heard people who do have a lot of student loan debt um, say that if you are considering paying it off, they say not to. Uh, if you're trying to get a new loan, like a mortgage or something, keep those accounts because if it may be your oldest account and your oldest account holds a lot of weight. So you don't want to get rid of any accounts too soon or you don't want to get rid of your get rid of your oldest accounts because those usually are the ones that are like the glue to your credit right so your oldest accounts are very important so it's actually better to have those accounts still open and just pay them on time than to like close it out completely and it not be on your credit anymore for some people it may drop your credit so you just want to be careful about removing accounts because those might be holding a lot of weight on your credit. Another thing that goes into your credit, doesn't really hold a lot of weight, but it is important, is credit inquiries. You don't wanna make too many inquiries on your credit at once. If you are like trying to apply for a loan or applying for a credit card or anything like that, those are considered hard inquiries when they run your credit. You wanna make sure that you know when that's happening so some people lock their credit through the credit bureaus. You just, you can lock it, put a password on it and have a pin. And anytime somebody tries to run your credit, they'll call you first and confirm that that's actually you. That doesn't really hurt your score if you are approved for something, but it does hurt if you continue to apply for things and you're not getting approved. So you wanna make sure that when you do apply for something, your account is good so that you do get approved and then it'll bump your score up rather than hurt your score. So you wanna make sure that your inquiries doesn't exceed two inquiries in a year 
Um, so I only apply for things like once a year. I usually only get a new account once a year. Um, and I'm careful about that still because my credit is still kind of technically new. It's under 10 years old. So um, I do try not to apply to too many things at once. And then um, I also wanna talk to you guys about the different types of credit cards you can get. So I have uh, two different types of cards. So the first one that I wanna talk to you guys about is a revolving card. This is the most common card that you're gonna see um, most people have. Just a regular credit card that you can get from a bank. Revolving credit cards are credit cards that have a balance. Basically, that means that you have a credit limit, you're given a certain amount that you can spend on that card based on your credit worthiness, and then every month you can spend up to that amount. Like I said, you don't want to spend up to that amount because that's going to show that you're not responsible with your monies. But you can spend up to that amount. You get reported to the credit bureaus basically how much of that credit limit you have spent every month. And over time, that credit limit can increase. As you continue to pay your balances off and pay everything on time, they'll increase your limit as they sh as you show credit worthiness. I've had a Victoria's Secret card for a very long time. I what I will say about getting store cards versus your uh, bank cards, if you are not a shopper, I'm a shopper, okay, I'm a shopper. And the main reason why I like store cards is because they have really good rewards um, for me because I like to shop. So I have a Target card, I have a Nordstrom card, I have an Amazon card, and I have a Victoria's Secret card. Victoria's Secret card I do not use anymore. I don't really shop there anymore. Um, but it was helpful when I was shopping there a lot because I would just buy a couple panties on it every month and that wasn't a whole lot. So I was able to increase my credit limit in a very short amount of time because I think at first I had like an $800 limit. I would spend like $25, like the, the five for 25. I would spend $25 once a month, pay that off. And then over time it increased and it's like $2,000 now. Store branded cards are not bad but you wanna be careful with them because if you are an overspender or tend to overspend, you don't wanna enable yourself, you know? Um, and you only wanna spend what you have. So I would only recommend those kind of cards if you are responsible with paying things on time and you know how to control yourself. They can be beneficial though if you do shop at certain stores a lot, especially like me for Amazon, I buy all my groceries, well not all my groceries, but I buy most of my groceries from Amazon through Whole Foods and I get cash back on those purchases. So there's a lot of different types of revolving cards. I don't wanna get into all of them today because I have so many of them. If you guys want me to make another video about all the cards that I really, really love, I can do that for you. Um, and also talk about business credit because I have a lot of business credit cards as well and they're very important for entrepreneurs and people with small businesses. So if you want me to talk about that, I can do another video about that as well. But this is like an intro video so I don't wanna go too far into it. Those are revolving cards. Revolving cards have a limit. You can only spend so much of that limit and when you do pay it off, pay off your balance, it shows up on your credit based on your limit and those limits, the limits that you have on all your cards are all added up and that is your uh, your total credit balance. Money that you spend on all those cards added up is your credit utilization. The other type of card that you can get is a charge card. You have no limit, but you have to pay off your full balance every single month. So on the due date, you have to have a zero balance. I started off with the Amex Green card. When I first started getting credit, I got an offer for an Amex Green and I got the Amex Green. Not really knowing what it was, I just saw Amex and I thought Amex was really good. I heard good things about Amex. So I was like, I want an Amex card, so I'm gonna sign up for it. Over time, I upgraded from the Amex green card to the Amex gold card. I will upgrade to the Amex platinum. There are a lot of different perks and benefits to having the platinum card. There's also another card that is even better than the platinum card, which is the black card. And that's like the Centurion and you have to be like invited personally by Amex to even apply for that. You can't just apply for it. Like you gotta be, you're really fancy if you got a black card, okay? So this is my Amex. This is the Amex Gold. I have the Amex Rose Gold because it's really pretty. Don't you just love her? Well, this is my favorite card. This is actually the card that I keep on the back of my phone. I have a MagSafe wallet that I put on the back of my phone. And then I, this is the card that I always keep with me. I use this card for literally everything because I like to get my member points, my Amex points because I like to use Amex points for a lot of different things, mostly shopping, but sometimes travel. Yeah, I love this card, but this card is a charge card. So basically I do not have a limit on this card and I can spend however much money I want, but I do have to pay it off at the end of the month. You're responsible for yourself basically. They're like you on your own, spend however much you want, but you gotta pay it back. And that's it. I really liked having the green card. When I first got the green card, I really liked it because I feel like it helped me to build um, really good habits with paying off my cards in total every month 
um, instead of keeping a balance because I couldn't hold a balance. Like I didn't have that option. Taught me to spend wisely, not to spend money I don't have. It's like you just have an open card, but you have to make sure that whatever you have in your bank account, you can pay off that card. It is a great way to be introduced because that way you learn how to pay things all the way off on time instead of having a balance, holding a balance, and then having to pay it off and then having all this debt. You can't have debt with a charge card. That's what I like about the Amex card. You get all of the benefits of having a credit card. You just don't, you can't hold a balance. You can do play, pay over time and you can create plans for large purchases but they have high interest. You don't wanna pay all that interest. And that's the thing about holding a balance is interest. You just wanna be careful with that. Um, that's why I like Amex though, because it makes me not wanna spend money I don't have, because I don't wanna pay the interest. I feel like it's a good habit. I practice that with my other cards, just so that I'm not holding a balance. I try to pay that balance off as much as possible because I don't wanna hold a balance. Um, yeah. So if you guys want to know more about any of the cards that I have or really love, I would love to make a video for you guys about that because I love talking about credit cards and we can chat more about this later. If you guys have any questions about credit, about money, handling money, business, anything like that. Yeah, what? What am I saying? So that's all. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you want to see more videos about money and credit. I would love to do that um, and just share with you guys what I've learned. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I have learned a lot and I have a lot of experience that I've gained over the last 10 years that I've been trying to grow my credit. So um, hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, let me know. And if you have any questions, I'll be sure to answer them. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. That's it. Okay.